Okay, weather. Weather. It's everywhere. I mean, just look outside. You're looking at weather. It's such a part of our everyday conversation, but there are lots of ways of talking about it. We can go for the classics. Look, it's raining. Or we can go for the more expressive. Whoa, 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 look man, the heavens opened there. What a downpour. Today, we're going to look at words and phrases to talk about the weather. Words and phrases like, it's just drizzling, suffered such an extreme hailstorm, the rain dies down, sweltering heat, icy driving conditions, the fog lifted, and many, many more. So yeah, let's talk about the weather. Okay, let's talk about this little country you might know, you might have heard of. Little country on the corner of Europe. Some of you might know it as Great Britain, or England, or the UK, or you know what, we're not getting into that. But you know what I'm going to say about it, right? Yep, rain. The UK is a ridiculously rainy country. If you're talking about the UK, you would definitely say something like, the weather is pretty rubbish. It's a very, very rainy country. A wet, soggy, grey little island. In fact, the UK experiences about 150 days of rainfall a year. That's over 40% of the year. To be fair though, sometimes it's just drizzling or spitting, meaning you get light rain, and some days you even just get a light shower or two. But on other occasions, the heavens just open. This is when the rain takes you by surprise. And while walking home from the shop, you can suddenly find yourself out in the pouring rain. In these situations, it's best to be home, preferably looking out at the unfortunate people trying to find shelter and smugly commenting, hey, I'm glad I'm not outside. It's pissing it down out there. Heavy downpours also might lead to storms, with thunder and lightning and a feeling of being in a late 19th century horror film, and even to hailstorms, which are clearly the most ridiculous thing in the natural world. I mean, ice falling from the sky. What? Back in 2001, St. Louis, Missouri suffered such an extreme hailstorm that it cost two billion dollars worth of damage and dropped hailstones the size of basketballs. Sometimes in the UK you get days of rain, two and a half days in fact, in 1903. That's the wettest year on record? Okay, two and a half days? I mean it's a bit impressive I suppose, but yeah that's nothing compared to Mauna Wili Ranch in Hawaii which saw almost a year, that's 331 days, it saw almost a year of non-stop rain back in 1939 to 1940. Okay, I like rain, but not that much, thanks. But even in Hawaii the rain dies down eventually. Anyway, we get it. We get it. England's wet. Sure. But yeah, let's go somewhere different. Let's find somewhere dry. So what's the driest place on earth? Well, if you actually take this question literally, then the answer is Antarctica. Yep, that place covered in snow and ice is apparently the driest place in the world. Snow and ice is famously quite wet, not dry. Yes, I know it never rains there, so officially it's dry, but it's covered in snow. Wet, wet snow. It's a wet place. So yeah, we mean somewhere dry and hot, right? And after some research, by which I mean googling, I can tell you that the appropriately named Death Valley in California is the hottest place on earth, and also the driest in North America. This is a place where it's always sunny, the sun is always shining, and with the world record highest temperature of 57 degrees Celsius, we can comfortably say that this place is scorching. It's boiling hot. I mean, this is some seriously sweltering heat. Heat that just makes you want to sweat and sweat and sweat and sweat and sweat. So yeah, if that's the hottest place, what about the coldest? Well, let's take a visit to Onyakon in northern Russia. This understandably small town of just 462 people is freezing cold, like really, really freezing cold. We're talking about temperatures of, at its most extreme, minus 67 degrees Celsius. 
when you live in Oymyakon, you probably don't need to say it's snowing very often. Everyone knows it's snowing. I mean, it snows a lot there, with the snow depth reaching 30 centimeters at its most extreme. So you can expect blizzards or snowstorms, icy driving conditions. I mean, can you even drive there? And when the snow melts in the spring, because it does eventually melt, very, very, very slushy conditions. Next time I'm complaining about it being a bit chilly, like now, a bit cold, I'll think of Oymyakon and those sub-zero winters. Anyway, moving on. Did you know that Grand Banks near Newfoundland in Canada is the foggiest place in the world? Nope. Me neither. Not until I did the research, I mean googling, for this video. No, this time yesterday I didn't know that Grand Banks was the foggiest place in the world. But I do now, and now so do you. There's not much to say about fog though, is there? I mean, it's there, it's white, it's difficult to see things in. When there is fog, we can say it's foggy. When the fog comes, we can say a fog's descending, which does sound kind of dramatic. And when the fog goes, we can say the fog lifted. And that's it. I mean, it's fog. What more do you want? But what about now, here, where I am? When I look out of the window, you know what I see? Grey weather. Clouds. So many clouds. In fact, it's so cloudy that I can't even see the sky. So in other words, it's overcast. Hope it clears up soon. But yeah, what about you? Look out of the window again. What do you see? And, and don't say weather. What's the weather like now, where you are? And what's the climate? That's the long-term weather conditions. What's the climate like in your town? Tell me in the comments, and yeah, let's talk about the weather. Meanwhile, um, there's someone told me something. I, I was in a, I was in an elevator, and it was just me and this one guy. He was very weird. He had a big trench coat and a big hat, and um, he just whispers to me, "He's like, don't forget." And then he hands me a note, and on the note says, "If you've watched a video on YouTube for more than two minutes, you must like and subscribe." And then he got off at the next floor and uh, he left on the floor behind a big knife. And I think it had some blood on it. So yeah, um, don't forget to like and subscribe um, or the, the scary man in the trench coat will, will come and say, don't forget and, and leave a knife on an elevator floor. I really just made that story up on the floor. I have no idea what I'm talking about. But yeah, like and subscribe if you like the video. Uh, meanwhile, thanks a lot for watching. And uh, yeah, I will see you next time.